Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to look at how to create a parametric staircase in Grasshopper. Alright, so we're going to dive into a new document and we'll start with a line SDL. We're going to try and build this to a roughly world scale. So my line SDL asks for a start point, a direction, and a length. So my start point is just going to be an XYZ point with no values and fine with it being at the origin, which is 0, 0, 0. Um, my direction is going to be defined by a Z vector, and my line, I'm going to give it a slider with a maximum value of 6,000, and I'll set the value to 2,400, or 2.4 meters. Alright, next I'm going to pipe that, and I'm also going to make a slider for my pipe radius. I'm going to set this to 1000 and then set my value to 400. Then I'll plug that into my radius and give it flat caps. Next I'm going to look at creating my um, my steps. And so the first thing we're going to define is a range and plug pi into there and a multiple of pi. I'll probably bump this up to something a bit ridiculous like 20 and we'll leave it as real numbers. So this is going to give us, because we're working with a circle, we're going to be, we're going to need to be working with angle measurements. And so we're going to use this, um, well, we're going to use radian values in order to define the length of our arcs. Okay, so now we're going to create an arc, uh, probably this one. So it asks for a base plane, which will be the world xy, the radius of the arc. Okay, we're going to make this a function of the radius that we've already set for our pipe. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to make an addition between this and this, and that's going to be our radius. So what that ensures is that any time we increase our pipe radius, the stairs or the stair width increases accordingly. Now my angle domain. Okay, so in order to set the angle domain, uh, we need to or we need to construct a domain. So this, so these are going to form part of our domain. We're also okay. We're also going to chuck in slider over here um, and I'll give that a value of maybe 50 for now and I'll plug that in give it 12 steps and so we're going to use this to define our start and end angle domain and what we're going to do is we want to okay I'll start by just plugging this in and we also need an elevation value, or else it's just going to build a whole lot of arcs at 0, 0, 0. And so for the elevation, we're going to use a series component. And my count is going to be x plus 1, because we're plugging 12 in here, and we're getting 13 values out. And my step size is going to be, uh, let's have a look. It should be, let's try 2400 over 12. And then plug that in. Oops, sorry, that needs to go into a point. So this is our Z elevation. And there we go. Alright, uh, you might, you may or may not notice a slight problem here, but uh, I'll point it out later and we'll find a way to adjust it. Okay, just tidying up a little. Okay, so now we've got all these arcs and they're only defining um, the beginning point of our angle domain. So everything is going from whatever this value is to 2 pi. 
So what we want to do is we want to add an offset. So basically what I'm going to do, I'll do it first and then I'll explain it. So we're going to divide our total angle by the number of divisions and then we're going to add that onto here and then we're going to construct a domain between this first list and the second list and so what this does is it basically ensures that our arcs will start and end in line with the next step. We can add a slight modification to this by multiplying this value by another slider which will set between 0 and 2 so that this way at 1 our, slide, our, our steps will be exactly in line with each other at 2 they'll be exactly in line with the next one or we could set it to somewhere less than 1 if we wanted it to have no overlap Okay, so there we go. There's our arcs. Now, what we also want to do is okay, we need to have a way to connect this end part of the step to this pipe in the middle. And so, what we can do is we can plug multiple radius values in here. So, we're going to plug the first one in that corresponds to our pipe, and we're also going to plug in this modified one and then we just need to graph those values and so that'll give us a curve on the pipe as well as one out here and then we can simply just loft between those but not so simply as you'll notice our data structure our data structure does not quite match up but we first because if we were to loft these it will loft right between all of these curves in a row which is not what we want we want to flip the matrix so that it will turn these two lists with 13 values into 13 lists with two values, those two values being the start and the end curve. And then when we lock those, we get our step. Now, if we were to take these and extrude these by some amount, which I will define with this slider, Maybe I'll set that to a maximum of 400, and then I'll plug that in. You're going to notice that our step is going to go a little bit above our pipe, which is not ideally what we want. So what we're going to do is where we set the series over here, we said divide the maximum value by the number of steps. So we're just going to change our maximum value to be related to the size of the step and then we're going to replace that in our division and there we go that was the problem that I talked about earlier good well done if you spotted it um, and so now anytime we adjust this our steps will not go above the pipe or above the the top of the pipe, which is what we want. And so that's basically the entire definition sussed. Um, we now we can now change the percentage of step length that we want to cover. What I could do is I could also just edit snapping and set a value to one if I wanted to be able to consistently mark that off just while I'm hovering back and forth. Maybe I'll set it to yeah, I'll just set it to one for now. I'm also going to turn these off because these aren't doing anything anymore. Um, I might want to increase my outer radius. I might want to... Ah, yes. Okay, so if you're wondering why I plugged in 0 to 2 pi, this is so that we can get one full revolution of the... Um, of the... what do we call it? 
um, of the steps. So it'll start and end in the exact same place. Um, that's kind of the nice thing about working with whole uh, with whole multiples of 2 pi. So if we bump this up a little bit, we'll start to get something a little bit weird. But, I mean, to be honest, if that's what you want to do, that's totally cool. This is just a sort of OCD thing that I do. So at 4, we're still getting that nice lineup. But we could just as easily bump that up. We can also change the amount of steps that we want. We could change the height of our steps. We could add in a whole lot more. Maybe reduce that angle down. So we're getting these nice, really elegant steps. And maybe we'll give them a tiny bit of overlap. Somewhere around there. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. That's a really simple definition for a spiral staircase. Go ahead and have fun with it.